All right, so let's see. All right, so let's see, checking one, two, three. Beijing. Uh, welcome to the live stream. I am also setting up a computer live stream on YouTube. So, let me just uh, continue setting up. I'm still kind of moving stuff around. Alright. Uh, welcome to the live stream. This is the 70 Wonders of China live stream. Uh, welcome, Leela. Welcome, A62. And welcome, everyone else, to our live stream. It's a little bit early, but this is my first live stream that I'm doing both on Palfish and on this computer. Uh, tonight is going to be our first live stream inception, in which uh, the live stream will also be posted from a different angle via by YouTube. Uh, welcome, Mr. DC. Glad you could join us tonight. And right now, just checking on how well... Um, everyone can see everything on the computer, which I believe everyone can see the book pretty well from your end. Welcome, Charlene W. This is the 70 Wonders of China live stream. Um, in a couple minutes, we'll be starting with Shanghai, um, the 27th wonder, the old Shanghai, and the next wonder will be the new Shanghai or modern Shanghai 10 years ago. So, if anyone has any questions or comments when we begin, uh, feel free to post them in the comment section below in uh, English, of course, since I'm still a little bit rough on my Mandarin script. So, let's see. Uh, so I am from uh, the United States, and I am in a place called Victorville, California. Uh, welcome, Nick Liu, to the live stream. I'm glad you could join us tonight. Well, I'm I'm pretty pleased. If you have any stories or comments, Charlene, about uh, Shanghai, uh, feel free to say anything that you would like. 
So, we have one more minute before the live stream begins. And, uh, I have not been to China before. But I am interested in going to China in the future. Welcome 12321C and welcome middle to our live stream. Glad you could join us tonight. Uh, and also, welcome to our live stream. This is the 27th Wonder of China, Shanghai. And now we shall begin with the reading. Follow along. Uh, where is our... Alright, go ahead and uh, follow along. We will begin with the quote at the top of the page. Um, as soon as this action, there we go. So, 27th Wonder of China. Nothing more intensely living can be imagined. Albertus Huxley, 1920. For the century before the communist victory in 1949, Shanghai was the most advanced and largest city in China. A metropolis devout to making money, which also became the center of progressive intellectual and political life. The concession areas which British and French forced the imperial government to allow them to establish in the middle of the 19th century, complete with their own legal system and military garrisons where the spearhead of modernization in the Middle Kingdom. Though deplored by Chinese nationalists, they introduced to China everything from modern banking to electricity, from a free press to motor cars. By the 1920s, the ever-expanding city, uh, strategically placed as China's bridge to the world by sea, and the mouth of the biggest river, the Yangtze, accounted for half of the country's foreign commerce, contained half of its factories, and attracted a third of all foreign investment in China. Its population increased by a million each decade to reach three million by the 1930s. Great cooperative buildings lined the wide riverfront avenue of the Bund, European architects built Arc de Cor skyscrapers. The liberated middle class youth. Dot dot dot. Welcome John Elliott to the live stream. Welcome everyone else. Glad you all can make it tonight. Um, we're on the 27th wonder of China, Shanghai, Paris of the Orient. And we are also, this is also the first live stream that is being live streamed uh, on two platforms. So here is our next little reading here. And let's see, if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to post them in the uh, comments below. Strode the western the streets in western dress. Bankers and merchants came from all over China, and the city was home to a mass of small traders, shopkeepers, and agents. Many Chinese moved from the native city into the concessions of the half million people in the French area in the 1920s. Only 19,000 were foreigners, and of uh, yes, Charlene, Sh Shanghai is a good location. Um, only 1,400 were from France. For all of his anti-imperialism, the father of the Republic, Sun Yat-sen, had had a home there in the Rue Milor, and it was in the French concession that the Communist Party held its inaugural meeting. The concessions were havens for Chinese writers, artists, intellectuals, particularly left-wingers seeking shelter from the repressive nationalist regime. The film studios made the metropolis the Hollywood of the Orient. 
on their own or in association with the foreigners, leading Chinese businessmen built up fortunes like Charlie Shong, a converted Methodist who began as a Bible publisher and founded one of the world's most popular families in China. One of his daughters married Sun Yat-sen, another wed the nationalist leader, Jing Zhang Shik, and a third as her husband, the prime minister and finance minister, H.H. H. Kong. Charlie's eldest son, T.V. Song, also served as prime minister and foreign minister, and as head of the Bank of China, and an array of other companies, was said the richest man in the world in the 1930s. In the matter of meadow creature comforts, of savory flesh pot, defiant served, no creosis of America, north or south, could ever hope to attain uh, welcome, Sydney Chow, and welcome, Mr. DC, to the live stream. I'm glad you could be back with us. Comfortable Heights that Shanghai takes for granted, wrote the correspondent of the London Times, as well as the 26-hectare um, race course in the center of the city. There were three Greyhound racing tracks, the largest holding 50,000 people. The department stores along the Great Shopping Avenue in Nanjing Road were the last word in retailing, complete with restaurants, cinemas, ping pong tables, and massage parlors. So, uh, welcome Alice Lee to the live stream. Uh, this is a first live stream. Uh, an interesting one because it's being held on dual platforms and I'm glad you all could witness it tonight so let me just get our next page here our most important platform of course is PayPal so welcome uh, Chris uh, she to the live stream. Welcome Demi Hugh to our live stream. We are on the 27th wonder of the 70 wonders of China, uh, Old Shanghai. And let us read together. Smart ballrooms could hold 2,500 people, and the French club offered Asia's best sprung dance floor. The future Duchess of Windsor said she felt she had really entered the uh, Shenzhenal Kingdom as she danced to tea for two at the hotel on Bumbling Well Road. Shanghai, she added, was almost too good for a woman. Uh, welcome Gavin0228. I'm glad you could join us in our live stream tonight. The most famous entertainment center, the wedding cake-shaped Great World, owed by pockmarked Hong, who combined his gangster activities with a job as head of the Chinese detective force in the French concession, got more outrageous as he ascended its six floors and silts up the side of the dresses and hostesses, getting higher as one rose up the stairs. There were gambling tables, magicians, fireworks, acrobats, restaurants, barbers, and earwax extractors, jugglers, ice cream parlors, shooting galleries, massage benches, acupuncture, hot towel counters, storytellers, peep shows, a mere maze, love letter booths with scribes, marriage brokers, and firecrackers. As an open city, Shanghai attracted slots of foreigners and refugees, which gave it a special international character. The Japanese took an dot dot dot. Uh, welcome WHG to the live stream. I'm glad you could join us tonight. Um, 
make sure this thing is charging, which, there we are. Alright, so, let's see, nope, that's exactly what we just read. There we are. So, let's see, we are on the Wonder of Shanghai. Oh, sweet. So, that actually, that actually sounds pretty cool, uh, Charlene. Um, Shanghai would be an interesting city to visit in China, I would say so. And this book probably agrees with me, given that two of the wonders in here are Shanghai itself, old and new. Ever increasing, part in industrial development, particularly its cotton and silk mills, after the Bolshevik Revolution, tens of thousands of white Russians poured in, some working in commerce, others as bodyguards, prostitutes, and dance hall hostesses. Foreign visitors ranged from politicians and businessmen. To the writers George Bernadette Shaw and Aldous Huxley, Noel Coward wrote his play Private Lives in Shanghai over a weekend while ill with influenza in his hotel room. Jews from Iraq became great tycoons among the Victor Sanson, who ran a trading and property empire but was equally famous for his parties, his pursuit of women, and his passion for the turf. There is only one race greater than the Jews, he said, and that is the Derby. Eli Kador, another Iraqi Jew, indulged his passion for the tango in a 130-square-meter ballroom lit by 3,600 3, bulbs and his white-painted marble hall mansion. Silas Hadron, who started off as a warehouse watchman, lived with his Eurasian wife and ten adopted children in an estate in the center of the city with three houses, uh, pavilions, artificial hills, lakes, and bamboo groves. Welcome Damon uh, Sheen and Vicky1020 to our live stream. Glad you all can make it tonight. And I'm going to switch to the next page while we're at it here. And uh, tonight is basically uh, two wonders are basically Shanghai, new and older Shanghai. And right now we are on the older Shanghai. So I probably will take a drink of water um, more so in future live streams. I also have a uh, small nose. I also have a small, like, sniffle in my nose right now, but I'll get through it. A celebrated novel of the city, Jing by Mao Dong, opened with an image of a gigantic neon sign on the roof of the power plant besides the Hong Pai River flashing out in flaming red and photosphetrescent green, the words, Light, Heat, Power. This, but this vibrant city covering 50 square kilometers was, as a saying went, a thin layer of heaven on the deep slice of hell. Most inhabitants lived wretched lives, tolling in mills for 10 to 14 hours a day, seven days a week, sleeping in teeming tentments, if not on the street, on sampans, or under river platoons, Hygiene was not extensive, disease and crime ec epidemic. The sting from the river and its creeks was inescapable, and Shanghai, was three times as crowded as London. The underworld, Green Gang, was enormously powerful, running dogs, protection rackets, kidnapping, 
and labor extortion, allying with the nationalist leader, Ching Kai-shei, it proved the foot soldiers of his white terror purged the dot dot dot. Well, let's see. Uh, thank you, Charlene, uh, for the uh, gift. And uh, welcome, Inclusive. Welcome, Kelly Lee, to the live stream. I'm glad you guys can make it tonight. Uh, we are on the section of Shanghai, uh, Paris of the Orient, the 27th wonder of China. Powerful communists and trade unions in 1927. Thereafter, the city was the main treasure house for the nationalist regime that ruled China till 1949. The gang's leader, opium addicted Big Ears Du, became the Shanghai godfather, branching out in banking and legitimate business, but still delivering coffins as warning to those who refused his demands. Um, welcome, Yadi, and welcome, 81C, to the live stream of the 27th Wonder of China, Shanghai, Paris of the Orient. In 1932, Japan provoked a war in the city which ended with it forcing the Chinese government to agree not to station troops there. Five years later, as general fighting broke out across China, fresh conflict erupted in the streets and surrounding countryside, ending with the Japanese occupation of the Chinese quarters. And then, after Pearl Harbor, of the whole city, the end of the Second World War in 1945 brought the liberation of Shanghai and the disappearance of foreign concessions. But the city did not regain its previous vitality. As the Communist Army approached in 1949, nationalist troops fled to Taiwan without putting up a fight. The giant portrait of Mao Zedong was hung in the front of the great world as businessmen moved to Hong Kong. Uh, welcome 81C and welcome Vivian to our live stream. I'm glad you could join us tonight. In the first decades of communist rule, the metropolis was regarded as an unwelcome symbol of the capitalist past. It became a byword for political orthodoxy and during the Cultural Revolution, Shanghai became a radical center with Mao's wife operating from the Monk Tudor Villa built in the 1920s by a foreign businessman for his mistress. It was not until the 1980s that the city began to return to its former glory, and the partially... All right. Welcome you and me to the live stream. Welcome Archer625. Um, it was not until the 1980s that the city began to return to its former glory and the partial buildings of the past were restored as offices, restaurants, bars, and nightclubs to produce China's most vibrant metropolis. So, <sighs> all right, um... I will check on the next couple pages to make sure they're more readable for uh, the people at Palfish. But before we move on to modern Shanghai, here are a couple pictures right here. So this is the Sepons flat bottom boats moored in the Su uh, Suzhou Creek, besides the home of concessions. Um, where there's a lot of uh, people uh, nearby. Right here is the uh, cotton and silk mills in which this child right here is weaving together um, cloth for clothing. Another picture in this section is right here. 
This is a photograph of the Bund in Hungpei River in 1929. Um, it's basically the main trading hub in the foreign concessions part of Shanghai. Right here is the only way of the east. Uh, Shanghai was once a filming industry capital in the world, specifically in China. This right here is uh, the men on set. Down below here is the Scene Sri Company, LTD, uh, a department store in Shanghai that sold uh, the latest goods from the West. Also considered a window to the outside world within China at the time. And on the very first page right here is the Bund in Nanjing Road, a picture taken in 1983. Um, it has a lot of Western architecture inside. Uh, welcome for the donation. And uh, now we will move on to the 28th wonder of China, which is modern Shanghai. So let us begin our reading and go from here. Welcome back, Yeti, to the live stream. Glad you could rejoin us. Uh, we are now looking at modern Shanghai. If anyone has any stories or about the city of Shanghai, go ahead and state them in the comments, and we will talk about them. Uh, welcome to 263 to our live stream. This is the 28th of the 70 Wonders of China, uh, Shanghai today. The key issue is to further promote the city and increase the city's international awareness and influence. Ying Yiku, Deputy Secretary of the Shanghai Committee of the Communist Party of China, April 2006. Welcome Green66 to the live stream. Glad you could join us tonight. Tonight is mostly the city of Shanghai, since it covers two wonders in this book. And we are on modern Shanghai from 10 years ago. Since China begun its market-driven economic expansion in the 1980s, Shanghai has become the most visible standard bearer of modernity in this country of 1.3 billion people. As a modern industrial, commercial, and financial center, and a magnet for wealthy investment, its importance is shown. Uh, welcome to the live stream, and uh, make sure to type the comments in English. It is important. Its importance is shown by the way in which it contributes a quarter of total tax revenue received by the Chinese government. It was not, however, chosen by the patriarch Ding Xia, uh, Xia Ping as one of the special development zones. These were located further south, but from the early 1990s it benefited from a combination of circumstances. First of all, there was a geographic location in the delta where the Yangtze River meets the sea. Then the policies of the municipal government and strong links with the central administration in Beijing boosted the city as an economic force. There was also perhaps the subconscious inheritance of its pre-communist past and the traditional commerce a come attributed to the people of Shanghai. All this makes it China's most go-ahead city and the country's most populous metropolis with 18 million inhabitants, though both claims will be challenged by the development of the capital in the run of the 2008 Olympic Games. So, one thing to note about the book, and it comes up here, is its uh, copyright date of 2007 and because of its copyright in 2007 
some of the uh, some of the cities that basically say like Shanghai today have one or two outdated phrases in them, such as mentions of the 2008 Olympics, which happened nine years ago. Anyway, with that in mind, let's move on to the next page. All right, so do 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 do. -do. Come on. It's taking a second, but here it is. Uh, welcome, this is Linda to the live stream. I'm glad you could join us tonight. We are on the 28th Wonder of China, Shanghai Today. The city which will host the World Expo in 2010, or already has, has leaped ahead in a way that astounds visitors. Uh, welcome D3A to the live stream. Glad you could join us. One joke is that the street maps are out of date before they are printed, like this book. A constant theme of discussion is whether Shanghai will take over the long-standing role of Hong Kong as China's main bridge with the rest of the world. Whether it will develop the legal and business methods needed to become a truly global metropolis, and whether the pace of growth seen in the last two decades can be maintained. Known for their self-confidence, Shanghai people have no doubt of the answer. The city's Communist Party leaders think there is still more to be done, though they were shaken by a major corruption scandal in 2006. Shanghai counts some 4,000 skyscrapers and plans another 1,000 in the coming years. The Oriental Pearl Tower, made up three columns and troped by a TV transmitter, rises 486 meters uh, beside the Hongpa River. Nearby is the 421 meter Jing Mao Tower with a hotel perched on the top. The business district of Pungdong has been reclaimed from a swamp, which is now covered by wide streets and towering ranks of office and apartment blocks. The new international airport is one of the most in the world, linked to the city by a magnetic high speed train and an eight-lane highway. The Dong Hai Bridge, the longest sea bridge on Earth, when it was opened in 2005, stretches dot 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 All right. for 32 kilometers to the Yangshi Islands. Shanghai hosts a great bricks motor race and has an ultra-modern stadium, which is packed out particularly for visiting European soccer teams. The surrounding region, including the old silk city of Suzhou and new manufacturing centers in the Yangtze Delta, made an industrial hub, and its services sector has been expanding rapidly as well. Elevated expressways are being constructed to reduce the traffic congestion. Lines are being added to the Underground Railway, and the city boasts a thousand bus routes. Its port has become one of the leading channels for goods in the world playing a key role in the booming trade between China, Japan, and Southeast Asia, and the West. A state-of-the-art cruise ship terminal has been built on the river. Bullet train links will span out 160 kilometers southward to Hongzhou, and 1,300 
west to Beijing, shopping streets sport luxury global brands and are jam-packed with crowds at weekends. Shanghai properly develop, property developers are a byword for their activity. The region is a center for China's uh, budgeting car industry. It houses one of China's two stock exchanges, the other one in the southern city of Xinjiang. Uh, welcome, Rose, and welcome everyone else to the live stream. Glad you guys could join us tonight. We are exploring the city of Shanghai today, as it was 10 years ago, since this book is copyright, is 10 years ago. Glad you could join us tonight. We are on the section links to the past. There are links with the past. Now, as then, Shanghai is home of some of the country's top universities. It attracts writers, artists, and filmmakers, and its nightlife and conspicuous consumption are celebrated. Gardens dating from the Imperial Age have been preserved, with their tea houses and arcades of shops selling traditional waves. The Shrine of School, where the Chinese Communist Party held its first meeting, has been renovated, close to an area of old houses which has been transformed by Hong Kong entrepreneur into a busy restaurant, bar, and nightclub district. The homes of leading communists and other figures of the 20th century history are carefully maintained. But as city powers ahead, questions have been raised about Shanghai losing its character. Many of its traditional two- or three-story houses with small courtyards or set behind brick walls along alleyways with arches have been pulled down to make way for modern apartments. Uh, welcome back, this is Linda, and welcome E5V to the live stream. Glad you could join us tonight. Uh, this is the 27th Wonder of China, Shanghai. If you have any comments about the city of Shanghai, feel free to post them in the comments section below and I will be free to uh, uh, further explore those. And office buildings. It is estimated that by the time of the expo in 2010, seven years ago, only 5% of the old city neighborhoods with their street food stalls and markets will remain. Still, the city authorities appear to have become more aware of the need to preserve the past alongside the gleaming concrete. Steel and glass present the big neoclassic buildings along the wide avenue by the river. The Bund have been restored as homes for Chinese and foreign businesses. The city houses one of China's finest museums in a building with a square base and round top to denote earth and sky. Opened in 1996, its 11 galleries contain 120,000 pieces collected not only for, from domestic sources but also including unique objects donated from Hong Kong and by overseas Chinese. It has elegant modern opera house and theater. The mansions of pre-communist tycoons have been turned into municipal facilities and the home of the father of the republic, Sun Yat-sen, is preserved on a quiet street in what was once the French Quarter. Though the national tongue is spoken by virtually everyone, under 60 years old, many inhabitants still use the Shanghai dialect with numerous dot dot dot. Uh, welcome to the live stream, Alan. Welcome, Wei On. Welcome, Jokes. 
And welcome back. This is Linda. I am glad you guys could join us tonight. Uh, we are on the city of Shanghai, uh, as in Shanghai of 10 years ago. Glad you could all join us tonight. We have one last page on Shanghai here. Uh, let us proceed forward in a couple seconds. Oop, that's not it. Yep, that's it. All right. Nope, that's not it. One second. Having a little bit of struggle finding the right screen right now for some reason. We will surely find it. Alright, and this should be it right here. Chinese from other parts of the country cannot understand the local cuisine thrives, particularly the specialty of dumplings. As in its pre-communist incarnation, Shanghai is a magnet both for Chinese people and for a growing foreign community. It attracts migrant workers from all over the country who provide low-cost labor for factories and construction projects. Some seeking work sleep in the street, a reminder that not everybody is uh, profiting from China's economic miracle. There is also a steady expanding middle class, both local and from elsewhere in China which has fueled the boom in property retaining and development of private education and health facilities. Some 300,000 people from the island of Taiwan are estimated to be living and working in Shanghai region. Uh, welcome Sherry, welcome back E5E, and welcome Star to the live stream. I'm glad you guys could join us tonight. We are finishing up the city of Shanghai. Though the importance of the river transport has declined, the great Yangtze River remains a key route for Chinese, for China, linking the west of the country with the Central Valley around Wuhan and then going to Nanjing region, and finally reaching the delta around Shanghai. Japan lies across the sea, and marine time routes connect Shanghai with both the traditional industrial area of northeast China and the fast-growing southern coastal routes. As China undertook its path of expansion, led by exports to the west, predominant figures in the central government in Beijing had directly personal connections with the city. For a time after the communist victory in 1949, Shanghai's past as a wide-open commercial center known for its decadence and links with previous nationalist regime made it politically suspect. It was kept under tight ring by Beijing, but then its former mayor, Jing Zemin, became Communist Party chief and president and his successor as city leader, Shuang Ruzhi, was appointed prime minister in charge of economic reform. The Shanghai connection no longer applies as a new generation of leaders from other parts of the country have assumed power. Some questions have been raised as to whether Shanghai will continue to receive favored treatment or whether the current policy of seeking to spread development more widely across China will affect it. By its size, prosperity, and process seem to guarantee the city on the Hongpa River a leading role in China's growth and relationship with the rest of the world. Uh, welcome to the live stream, SC 
H N E E B L A U. Glad you both could join us tonight. Before we move on to the next uh, city, uh, let's look at a few pictures the book shows of modern Shanghai. Uh, starting with right here is the Ning King Road uh, ten years ago in this picture. Welcome Dalloway to the live stream. I'm glad you could join us tonight. Um, right over here is a picture of the skyscrapers in the Pungdong district or the financial center of Shanghai. Down here is the um, is the view of the Jingmao Tower. On the next page, at the very bottom, is the Bud at Night, uh, Shanghai's famous Riverside Avenue, flanked by the historical buildings. Uh, welcome Seven FC to the live stream. I'm glad you could join us tonight. Uh, we are finishing off the city of Shanghai with a few of its pictures. Just at the top, right here, are gardens and buildings from old Shanghai being used as a tourist destination in the old Chinese quarters from 1784. Uh, welcome back, this is Linda. I'm glad you could join us tonight. Um, and our final picture of Shanghai is the skyscraper rise uh, within the city of Shanghai itself. So, if anyone has any last minute comments about the city of Shanghai before moving on to uh, our next 29th wonder, uh, this is your time to say so before we move forward. Uh, welcome Let's see. And now let's move on to our next section. So our 29th wonder is Hong Xiao. And let's begin with the quote at the top. Uh, welcome 123456 to the live stream. Glad you could join us tonight. Green mountains surround on all sides, the still waters of the lake. Oh, sweet. I'm glad you could join us, you and me. Um, if you have any comments about Hong Zhao, uh, go ahead and post them in the section below. Green mountains surround all sides, the still waters of the lake, pavilions and towns in hues of gold. And a, ra a sure rise here and there. One would say a landscape composed by a painter. Only toward the east there are no hills. Does the land open out and there sparkle? Like fish, fish scales, the bright colored tiles of a tiled roofs. Uh, welcome back, Yadi. Welcome back, 7FC. And I'm glad you all could join us for the live stream tonight. We are on Hong Zhao. So, you and me actually posted a couple pictures of Hong Zhao. And, uh, let's see, can I put... And those, and the pictures of... So your office tower actually looks pretty lovely, you and me. Um, what kind of uh, office is it? Is it a financial office? Uh, post in the comments below. Set beside the West Lake, at the southern end of the Grand Canal, the city of Hangzhou has been celebrated since the Tang Dynasty for its natural beauty. The lake was formed when silt from Quin Chang River cut off the inlet at the 6th century AD. When the southern part of the Grand Canal 
was constructed to transport rice northwards. The small city was walled. It remained vulnerable to flooding, particularly during the autumn equinox, when strong tides forced the Kuangtang River inland, forming the famous Hongzhou Bore, a wall of water some seven meters high in the Five Dynasties period when Hongzhou was ruled by the independent kings of Wu Yu, the Panda uh, Panda uh, Pangoda of Six Harmonies was constructed on the bank of the Qingtang River in the hope of subordinating the river. Uh, thank you for the donation, you and me. Welcome to the live stream, Sunny E70. I'm glad you could all join us tonight. Uh, we are on the 29th wonder of China, Hong Zhao. Apart from the rice shipped up the Grand Canal, the silk industry was also important in Hangzhou. The tea produced on the local hills, particularly Longjing or Dragon Well green tea. It is one of the most famous in China. The city became a major trading center with ten great markets selling pork, cereals, fish, lotus seeds, 11 varieties of apricot, pears, shellfish, venison, and other luxuries. It attracted traders and travelers, including possibly Marco Polo and Ordok of Oradin, and the first British envoy to China, Lord Mackin uh, Mackinney, in 1793. As a beautiful spot, Hongzhou is one of the best examples of the Chinese aesthetic, which holds that nature through beauty in itself is further enhanced by architecture. Construction on and around the lake with temples and pagodas set in the surrounding hills began in the early 9th century. Some of the first constructions were both practical and aesthetic. In Ba Causeway, which links the Sandbank Isle, uh, Gum Shan, or Lonely Island, with the lake shore, was built when the poet Ba Juni was serving as an official in Hangzhou and incorporates locks to control the water flow, allowing access to Gong Sha and also serve to break up the expanse of water, a technique often used in garden design. Uh, welcome, Cuff, to the live stream. This is the 29th wonder of China, Hong Zhao, and I'm glad you could join us tonight. Now, let's move forward in our book here. Next little section, next little page. All right, so let's read together. The Longer Dyke, which in effect created a western inner lake, was constructed when another famous poet, Su Dongpo, served as governor of Peng Zhao, and is named after him. The surface of the lake is broken up by small, small artificial islets. The pavilion at the heart of the lake, just beyond Gong Zhao, was first constructed in 1552, and the island of small seas, with four pools enclosed by a dredged silt, was made in 1607. Both have small pavilions on them, and to the south of the island of the small seas is a group of some Pandagos set in the lake. They are said to have been placed by Sung Dongpo to warn against the planting of water chestnuts 
which threatened to clog the lake. Uh, welcome, Charlotte Lau, to the live stream and everyone else who joined. Glad you could join us tonight. When the moon is full, candles are placed within them so they look like three small moons joining the reflection of the full moon on the water. Hong Zhao was frequently visited by the Kong Shi and Kulong emperors on their tours of inspection of southern China. They built trading palaces around the town and on Gongsha Island. There, Qing Long also built a library to house one of the sets of his 36,000 volume Collectina. Seku Kongshi Shu, or Complete Treasury of the Four Storehouses, was destroyed with most of Hong Zhao's temples in 1860 to 1862 when Taiping rebellions led by Venetic leader, partially inspired by Christian teachings, attacked the city. Around the lake are the Bakuta, built between 968 and 975, in an unusual tampering, form the Lefeng Ta, built in, 19, in 975 from bricks containing tiny printed Buddhist texts which collapsed in 1924, but which has been recently rebuilt, perhaps because of the legend of the White Snake. One of Hong Zhao's most famous stories tells of a white snake which could turn itself into a beautiful woman to ensnare young men. The snake finally trapped in the fountains of the Pandago Pangoda, and the story ends with the warning that when the pen Goda falls, the Hangzhou boar fails, and the West Lake dries up. The snake will be released. To the west of the lake, in the hills, is the Lingyang Buddhist Temple, founded by an Indian monk in 326, and approached by paths linked with rock carvings dating from... Dot, dot, dot. Welcome to the live stream, everybody. This is Hong Zhao, and it's and it is the twenty ninth wonder of the seventy wonders of China. Let's see, so let's see. Got eight minutes left, and let's uh, finish reading from the top of the page. 10th to the 14th centuries, forming the most significant group of Buddhist rock carvings in southern China. Beside the lake is the temple commemorating a local hero, General Yu Fei, whose loyalty to an Efete ruling house is known throughout China and has elevated him to an almost godlike status. The Song Dynasty, which has forced to move its capital south to Hongzhou in 1126 as the north of China was invaded by the Jing. Yu Fei had led a successful campaign against them in 1140 and was keen to continue to recapture the north, but he was ordered to return as his army was seen as more of a threat than the Jing. He was imprisoned and executed. But in 1221, a temple in his memory was built near the lakeside grave. Characters which mean ultimate loyalty to the country, which according to legend, Yung Fang's mother tattooed on his back before he went north. I uh, welcome Angel Wu to the live stream. Glad you could join us tonight. Are carved in stone by the Ming calligrapher Hong Zhao and repeated elsewhere in the temple compound. This compound is also famous for kneeling cast iron figures of his prosecutors that are spat upon by visitors. Unlike many of other Chinese cities, 
Hangzhou retains much of its beauty. High-rise buildings have largely been kept away from the lake, and though many guard grand villas have been recently built around it by rich and powerful, they are mostly screened from view by trees and vegetation. So we have six minutes left in the live stream. Welcome for anyone who pops up in the next couple minutes. And we have enough time to look at the pictures of Hangzhou before going. Right here is the shrine of the local hero, Yung Fang, sleeping like a lioness in the Lingyang Temple. Down below are pilgrims at the Lingyang Buddhist Temple, um, taking part in a festival. Uh, right over here is the is a small garden in the West Lake, um, in which the this is an elegant pavilion. In the very bottom of the same page, um, this is the West Lake. Um, as it's depicted, there's the Lonely Island right here, uh, the Sioux Causeway, uh, the Ba Causeway, the central, the pavilion at the heart of the lake, and the island of the small seas right here. So, that's how the lake is divided. And on the previous page, Right here is an 18th century silk painting with the Emperor Yang Di inspecting the extension of the Grand Canal at Hangzhou. So before we go tonight, since we have four minutes, I would like to uh, make an announcement that I will be doing the Apple Valley Reverse Triathlon tomorrow morning at... 7 a.m. or 10 p.m. China time. Um, I encourage you all to come along for the live stream starting at 6.30 a.m. or 9.30 p.m. Uh, for a three-hour live stream of the race. Uh, welcome, Hisa. I will be doing another 70 Wonders uh, live stream tomorrow at the same time of 11 a.m. China time. But a triathlon live stream from 9.30 p.m. till 12.30 a.m. China time. And uh, with that in mind... Welcome to the live stream, Amy. Um, glad you can make it tonight. Love the puppy feet on your uh, name. With that in mind, I will probably be going to bed earlier tonight, no later than midnight my time or 3 p.m. China time. So if you want to have any chats, conversations, or lessons for tonight, Please contact me as soon as possible, because I will be going to bed fairly early. Welcome back, Hisa. Be going to bed fairly early compared to normal. I usually am in bed at 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. these days. I will aim to be in bed by 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. or 12 a.m. my time. So. If you want to have a conversation, talk about the said live stream here, uh, please talk with me uh, before the time of 12 a.m. So, Amy asked a question, but I cannot answer said question. Um, what I... So I can't answer the said question. I will be having this particular live stream at 11 a.m. tomorrow and a triathlon live stream at 9.30 p.m. till 
12.30 a.m. Uh, tomorrow as well. China time. So feel free to come by for that. And also uh, feel free to ask any questions about the reading. If you want to ask for a if you want to ask for a section of the reading to read beforehand, tomorrow we'll start on uh, Xu Zhao, the thirtieth wonder of China, and uh, it will basically last, and we'll probably also go into the city of Xi'an, the thirty-first wonder of China. So with that. I bid you all a good lunch and uh, hope to be chatting with everyone after class in the next few hours if you have any questions. All right. So I basically brought the enrollment back up. So. All right, so this is the uh, YouTube live stream. Uh, you have just participated in a collaboration uh, with uh, my app on Palfish with the channel. Um, whoever was commenting on said channel, I was not uh, paying attention to the full details of what was in the comments. But I hope that you guys all had a wondrous uh, time reading with us. And if you're reading this later, um, I'm glad you decided to learn about the wonders of Shanghai tonight. I am going to end this live stream right about now. Have a good night.